Did you have any any news you wanted to touch on this week? Um, well, I do have a couple of things from last week because we were talking about Night of the Living Dead and zombie movies. Okay, that's not um, and two things have come up in the past week that were kind of a part of the conversation last week. One was that I watched the movie Cargo, which someone had recommended in the chat last week. It's streaming on Netflix with Martin Freeman. Um, and it was really good. I loved it. Uh, Martin Freeman is a great actor and I think most people know him from, well, he's good in Lord of the Rings. Um, but I think most people right now know him from the Avengers movies. He's not in Lord of the Rings. He's not? No. Oh, he's in The Hobbit? He's in The Hobbit. Oh, I haven't seen The Hobbit. So I don't know Uh, if he's actually good or not in it. Um, but I think, I feel like most people know him like right now from the Avengers movies and he really doesn't get to act he's, or shine in that yeah he's like hardly in it yeah yeah, yeah. well he's in it but it's like yeah, he's he in it much. but he's he's like a side character and he's very he's like the straight man that everyone else plays cool around um so if you don't know what martin freeman is capable of i highly suggest watching cargo because he acts his ass off in it he's really really good in it um and a surpriser for me was that uh because it's is set in Australia and it actually talks about it actually deals with the the plight of the aboriginal people in Australia which was kind of cool to see on film because that's not a topic that comes up very often that's cool I didn't know about that yeah I didn't know about that either so but that doesn't give anything away it's important to the plot but it's you know I I watched the trailer for it hi General Davis Uh, I watched the trailer for it and I felt like the trailer gave too much away so don't watch the trailer. I didn't watch the trailer before. Yeah, you watch the trailer later and you can tell me if it goes away too much. I would say don't go watch the trailer because I felt like there was a lot of like little moments where I was like, I wish I hadn't I haven't seen the movie, so that might be inconsequential. But yeah. I always felt like I didn't want to watch the trailer. So I would just go watch the movie. Maybe go look look up yeah, don't just go watch it. Oh uh, yeah, we first met him on Hitchcocker's Guide to the Galaxy. I think that was my first introduction to him too. Yeah, I yeah, he was I didn't watch that actually until very recently, so I didn't know him then when that first came out um but he was great in that too i like that too i also watched the short that cargo is based on which is also called cargo um do not watch that before you watch the movie because the movie is much improved on the short and the short will give the movie away to you very quickly um so yeah cool 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 uh one of the big news that happened this week it was uh announced that james gun james gunn is gonna be directing uh, the new um, Suicide, Squad, Suicide Squad movie, which is kind of amazing. Um, I've not been I've been very vocal about not enjoying the DC movies very much, except for Wonder Woman was great. Um, and Suicide Squad, as much as I love the idea of Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, she was not given a very good movie to be in. That no. Suicide Squad was just awful. She has a chance um, to to do a good job. Yeah. I and I feel like since Suicide Squad was kind of going the route of Guardians of the Galaxy anyway, trying to be colorful, big and colorful and playful, but but perverse at the same time. <laughs> um, that's what James Gunn is good at, mm-hmm. and I think he can actually do well. You know what? I didn't hate the first um, Suicide Squad. I went in it thinking it was going to be just the god awful thing. I was like, it's not good, but it was like, I like. After the hour and a half, I was like, "Okay, I got my, my I got my hour and a half of entertainment." I can see the the production of it, mm-hmm. the the mishap in production of it, mm-hmm. because it feels like two totally different movies mm-hmm. that you experience twice. Like the opening when they're introducing all the characters in their cells, yeah, and and you get to know the characters that way, and then right after you figure out who all these characters are, you get an introduction to all the characters as they meet. The team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like it, they did a lot of things twice that really didn't, didn't need to happen. Yeah. Um, the only, there's one scene that I think actually works very, very well in the movie, and that's when they're in the bar and everything slows down mm-hmm. and they kind of like talk about who they are. That's the only time you really mm-hmm. get to see them as characters and not as like, like these larger than life, crazy ridiculousness. Um, if I think if the movie could branch off of that kind of heart that was in that one scene, yeah. then it would be much better. And given the the, the characters a little more depth, because yes. I feel like the only one that I found kind of interesting was the boomerang guy. 
Yeah. And he was like, well, that was kind of like interesting. Everybody else was just like, because he was like, he was silly and he, you, he had some motive. You could, this character has some motivations to cut out what he was doing. Right. Everybody else was just there. And I didn't, I didn't really see that. And, and Jared Leto, I, I, that's the one I, I couldn't. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's. I, I wanted to give it the chance and just to go, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to, maybe, maybe it, I'm wrong. No, it was, it was bad. It was bad. He was, he was the worst part of the movie. There were a lot of things that I did not like about the movie, but he was by far the worst. Like, if he had not, he would not been part of the movie, you can go, okay, that wasn't a great movie. Let's see what happens next. But he really, like, took the movie. I did it. like the twist that they did with the marketing. In that a character who you th- is marketed as being part of the Suicide Squad team is actually the villain of the movie. Mm-hmm. That took me by surprise. I that didn't expect cool. her. Yeah. Um, I think it was kind of a lame story, but but I think that was a cool twist that they blindsided me with. Um, yeah. So I mean, there was there was some like potential in the. Oh, movie. there's a lot of potential. So, so now with the second one and having James Gunn there, that definitely. Could uh, it could happen? Uh, Ken uh, Russell Roboticon says, "I'm wondering where he can take it though, because he can't just redo Guardians, which is what they were going for in the first place." No, but but James Gunn is is smart enough to realize that, and um, he's got a lot of stuff other than Guardians that he does well. And even if they just redid the Guardians, it would already be an upgrade. Even if it's not the same <laughs> it would thing, be, it would be a better Suicide Squad. I don't know how many of you guys are are gamers out there. I assume you are, since you're watching this gaming channel and and watching Danny play his games and stuff. But if you guys have played Lollipop Chainsaw, do you remember that game? That was actually written by James Gunn. And that character, that main cheerleader character is basically Harley Quinn. So he's he knows how to write these kinds of characters. Uh, Russell Roboticon says, they wasted Will Smith, in my opinion. I think kind of Will Smith wastes himself, generally. Yes. I'm I not, would agree a, with that. I used to, I used to love him. I think he did some fun stuff in the past, but right now I haven't seen anything good. For he him. does. Um, he did. The reason that you think that, because it's exactly what I think. The reason that his his fun stuff seems to have been in the past is because when he was doing it, it was his first time doing it, and now that's all he does. He still does that fun character, but it's literally the same character in every single movie. <laughs> yeah, I just it, and, and, he, Will Smith plays Will, Will Smith. Smith, and not, not like in a good way, like where Tom Hanks is kind of always Tom Hanks, just because he's so likable. And Tom Hanks <laughs> is the best thing that ever happened to humanity. But like, yeah, he's just not that interesting. Even in like, like I watched that movie he did, um, the one with his son. Was it with his son? Which one they did? The, the one where After like, Earth. No, no, the like serious one. Pursuit the one about, of Happiness. Pursuit of Happiness, and that was a decent movie. I thought that was kind of cute and yeah. a message, but he wasn't amazing he's just he was playing that like hard will smith yeah i just i feel like he, he needs like acting coaches or something or a good director i i love real life will smith just like i love real life jada pickett i think they're both yeah like, they they both have very inspiring words and great things to talk about and how they raise their kids to be free and open about things but both of them on screen <laughs> i'm so bored by both of their work um Cause she was, I mean, we're talking about comic book movies. Um, her Jada Pinkett on Gotham. It was the worst thing ever. <laughs> I couldn't, I just, I probably a good reason why I stopped watching the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What was, what was the other news thing? Uh, that was it. There wasn't a whole lot of news. Um, so, uh, as secret saying cucumber, you mentioned something on the discord about Mr. Church. Oh, watching the preview or Crunch, of Mr. You, Church. Mr. Did you mean Mr. Church, the movie from 2016? I wasn't sure what you meant. There's a the, yeah, the Eddie Murphy movie from 2016. I've actually seen, so we can talk about that if you like. But that's not. I don't know if that's. But what I you don't meant. know if there's a new one coming uh, out. Also, I, I apologize for not checking the, the 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 Discord this week. Life is getting crazy. Wedding's coming up, but I'm gonna try to make sure that I keep and try to make sure we keep that conversation going on the Discord and, and uh, some uh, F Fjord. I forgot how to pronounce your name. You asked for homework, so we want to try to keep that on, so you guys know what we're going to talk about in the next week, and I'll make sure to do that. Yeah, I have to be end. better about checking in Discord too. Yeah. October is always my busiest month because I'm doing all sorts of horror movie stuff, as well as Inktober's doing literal ink paintings every single day. Um, it gets draining, but yeah. So you do want to talk about the Eddie Murphy Mr. Church? Okay, have you seen it? No, I don't haven't seen it. My, yeah, my question is like, why? Maybe because I haven't seen it. I don't know how it relates to what we were talking about. Uh, but no, I haven't seen it. 
Well, it doesn't relate to any of the, <laughs> the October stuff we're talking about. It's not a horror movie um, or have any horror elements in it. But we can... Yeah, let's plan to talk you know about what? it. You know what? <laughs> I have not seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. guess it was just but a recommendation. It was just so a recommendation. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it on a future episode. Okay, yeah. So, and clear. if you want to go on the Discord and tell me more about what you meant about Mr. Church and what you like, because I, 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 it was just one sentence, so I didn't know what you meant. But go ahead on the Discord and we, we can we can talk about. It. We're totally free to talk about it. Uh, we have three. Hey, uh, MKNOC714. Welcome to Cinephilia. This is uh, sh- one of our shows here on Perception Studio. We talk about movies and we. Uh, we hang out. We have discussions about movies. Today we're t- discussing um, Universal Monsters. Yeah. Well, we're gonna get to that. Right now we're covering news and stuff like that. So we just uh, so we have a couple of trailers we want to check out with you guys. A couple of really good ones. One really good one. Two good ones, and 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 then a questionable <laughs> one. I haven't seen one of them, so we'll one see. One of them includes um um Will Smith, which. Could potentially be horrible, or I can't. I one of them has it. Will Smith in it. This first one has Will Smith in it. Oh, that's right. I forgot that he's in that. He's oh God, he's to gonna be. be horrible. Okay. Hey, Winston, how's it going? <laughs> uh, oh, Kenny wants to know what movie's playing in the background. Oh, that is Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein. So we will be talking about that in a moment. So uh, let me know if you guys hear the music. I think I think I had it set up fine. This is the the teaser for. For Aladdin, starring Will Smith starring as Will the Smith. genie, and a bunch of brown people, which is awesome. Yeah, that's good. Can't hear it. I can hear it. Oh, they can't hear it. Yeah. Well, it's just music playing. I'll fix it in a bit. Now they they can hear it now. Oh, now you can hear it. Yeah, it was just low. There's Iago. Iago looks really cool. So here's my first problem. What's that? It says, so here's my first problem. Yeah. Why doesn't the Cave of Wonders talk? <laughs> Was it in this? Yeah. Because in the, in the original movie, or in the, in the animated movie, he did, and it was so awesome. And then, like, I, And this is all magic, so he should be able to... Is there an Abu in this movie? I'm not sure. Because Abu gets cut out of everything. Anytime yeah. I'm matter. not sure if, if they are doing Abu or not. Brown guy. I don't know how I feel about this. Did you this. say brown guy or yeah. bad guy? No, brown guy. <laughs> um, I, I am really... And it's directed by Guy Ritchie, of all people. Uh, okay. Um, I really want to be excited about it. But there are just a couple things that really hold me back from it. And it's kind of like how it's been with all of the Disney animation to live action movies. Mm-hmm. They've, they've had these nice ideas. Like they're, they're generally nice ideas that you would be able to see these things in live action. But then there's always something that just is slightly off about it. That's just like, uh, I just want to watch the original. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why I think the only of the remakes that I've actually enjoyed was Cinderella. Because they didn't just retry to remake the movie. They took they took elements of that movie and said, we're going to make a movie that's a similar story that we've heard of before, but we're going to do something where it doesn't have to stick to the movie. So you yeah. can watch that movie and not exactly relate it to the original movie. And I think a lot of these new movies are trying to relate too much to the original source or the the, re, the, the movie that they came from. Yeah. A little too hard. What Cinderella did great was that it took, it took Disney's version of the story, but it expanded it and it added a lot of detail to it. Um, the rest of them kind of just try to tell it from a different perspective, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Um, like Maleficent, which for a long time, she was my favorite Disney villain. Um, and I think Angelo, Angelina Jolie in the role was actually great, but they couldn't nail the story. Like it, it just felt like segments that were stitched yeah. together instead of actually being a full story. Um, they try to redeem her. Like, she doesn't need to be redeemed. No, she's a she, she's a villain. She was actually a bad person, and like she just kept she just kept. She being. literally was upset because no one invited her to the party, and she's like, "Curse you!" Yeah, literally, that's, that's a bad person. That's that's a bad person does. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Uh, um, so I don't know. I don't know what what is going to be 
the twist or whatever that they do with this Aladdin, how they're going to, I don't know, maybe it's going to be that Abu isn't in it. I don't know. Um, um, yeah. The, the, I, the, I heard the costume for the genie. Well, there was an article that talked about a person who worked in the movie who said the costume for the genie was very cool. So the genie might look good, but I don't know. I, I can't, I can't, don't see. Again, maybe it's just hard because Ron Williams was so perfect as a genie that it's hard to see anybody else do it. Or do it, like, I don't know how the Al stay with, Like, he needs to not do what Ron Williams did. If it's Will Smith, he won't do what Robert Williams <laughs> did. He's going to do what Will Smith does. It's going to be Will Smith dressed up like the genie. Is the genie supposed to be... So if he has a costume, he's alive. Yeah, it's actually Will I Smith. It's, it's Will not Smith. a CG character. I don't know if it's Will Smith, Will, Will Smith in like a <laughs> costume it Mike with Tyson? CG. Is Mike Tyson? So I have no idea how they're doing it. So. so that was a teaser. I guess we'll have to revisit that when the actual full trailer comes yeah, out. Yeah, I'm he's, uh, sick of saying says, uh, CGI genie. I feel like it might be him. He's going to be a mix of CGI and and him. It's kind of, it's it's Will. If they're going to cast a big name going, like Will him. Smith in a movie that's live action. Um, and I do that because all these Disney movies are mostly CG with some live action in it. But yeah, they're, they're going to want to use Will Smith's face for sure. What's the over under on him saying, "Oh hell no"? Nah. <laughs> That's a good chance he's gonna this, definitely yeah. say that. <laughs> um, cool. We have another trailer to want to share with you guys. This one actually, I'm excited about. And this is one that I have not seen. You have not seen, and this is the trailer number. This is my headphones are in the wrong one. Trailer number two for Mr. Glass, which is um, I push play, which is um. A sequel. It's the end of a trilogy. He's given up. There was a, another trailer before this, and I actually saw that one, but I haven't. This is, is new to me. It's a little longer trailer. He's too thoughtful. You won't be lonely anymore. You have two new friends. The three of you think you have extraordinary gifts, like something out of a comic book. I've developed an effective treatment for this disorder. The light will so if you guys haven't kept up with um, this in my Shaman movies, this is, this is the third of a trilogy. Step away from the controls now, little doctor. Can't beat the beat! If you haven't seen Split, you should. It was, Split. It was a good comeback for M. Night. Good for you. After making some really bad movies for a while. Yeah. And unfortunately, knowing that this movie want? exists now, you you kind of ruined the twist of, of the Split. Well, well, not of the story of the movie itself. Right. It's just a twist that happens at the end. Which is what reveals that it's part of this trilogy. Yeah, because you go through the whole of Split. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that shot alone is going to be worth the movie ticket. That sounds like the bad guys teaming up. But yeah, if you haven't watched Unbreakable and Split, are both are really good movies. We're, I think we should do an episode. When when okay, Mr. Glass comes out, we should do an episode on this trilogy. Yeah, so that's a good idea. Do your homework. There's some homework if you have not seen those. They always underestimate the mastermind. It has begun, David. I found someone who will require your full attention. This is cool. You shouldn't be yeah. hiding in the shadows. You might want to try and stop us. And I wonder if this is the edge of the end. Mm. That's a gun bull. A lot One, of two, three. Are going to die. Oh, and John Vian's here. Now, That's a gun, John like Oh, look, she's a sub. And Jay, sandwich. <laughs> we are not meant to have this much power. <laughs> Finally. All of us together. Uh, you can you, you, you keep an eye on our perception video. I think it's Danny. You need to get out of here. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this too. It's nice that what um. I'm gonna have that hair soon. <laughs> I can be Mr. Glass for Halloween. Um, it's nice that that M Night is doing these um superhero inspired movies but they're original like yeah we get we get something that feels like a comic book movie but it's not but it's not it's something original and it's nice to to have some original work out there uh yeah so if you guys don't know this this is part three of the trilogy first one was unbreakable which we had no idea was gonna be a trilogy and then split came out and and then and then 
I'm going to tell you because it's too late now. Uh, at the end of the split, they reveal that that it's part of... Oh, it basically it's you, the same it's universe. It's the same universe. You basically, they just show you something that it's like, oh, it's the same universe. Uh, after basically the main story happens. Um, so it's kind of cool that now we have a third movie that's going to put them all together. Um, so it's great. I'm excited. It's one, That's one of those good movies that he actually did a good job. And it was his own thing. Or like you said, his own world, his own thing. And it was original. Um, so when he does good stuff, he does really good original stuff. That's kind of fun to watch because I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. I guess I'll say hi to jean since I haven't yet. Hello. She thanks. came here for you. Thanks for joining in. Uh, and last, last, last trailer we're going to check out is uh, one that Will has been talking about. I have. A couple of times. I, I'm a huge fan of cats in film. And, and this movie has a cat in it. It does have a cat in it. Important, important, important cat. cat. This is uh, Pet Cemetery trailer number one. Definitely not um, Boston. Remake of the it's classic. A Here we go. Why am okay, I repeating so, things you're saying? <laughs> what do you think? Wow. This whole place is ours? I even got him to throw in a whole forest as a new backyard. The trucking route behind it. If you if you've seen the original oh. movie, then have you seen the original one? Mm mm. Then I know what the truck is. Yes. Okay. That, that's actually my favorite part of this trailer, <laughs> is that truck. <laughs> they used to dare each other to go into the woods at night. They knew the power of that place. They feared it. That's because they're creepy. Are they in the original? Those woods. Um, not... Belong to something They're else. They're important to the story, but... It's visible. Yeah. <laughs> I always See, like a lazy this, eye. This trailer wow. has me up until that shot of the cat. That <laughs> that cat makes me laugh every single time. I like that John Lithgow in it. Just some yeah. Watch it. yeah. I like him a lot. And he's he's perfectly cast in his role. Yeah. I think he'll he'll do very good in the role that he used in this movie. That brings things back. Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> John Vieira says that drummer should try harder. <laughs> and yes, Pet Cemetery is spelled wrong on purpose. There's a reason why it's spelled wrong. If you have never seen the movie, I I had this conversation not too long ago. I was like, why is it spelled that way? It's in the it's in the story. There's a reason. Um, so how I feel about can we turn this off? Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted by <laughs> chat stuff that was happening. Thank you, Danny, for taking care of that. How I feel about um, that trailer is that I'm I'm hesitantly excited for it. I think it'll be a fun movie, but it the movie how well the movie works depends on two things that I can't tell if they're good or not in this trailer, mm -hmm. and it's the cat, and that cat really doesn't look evil. It just looks like it just had a bath. <laughs> it's like a bath and it's got a lazy eye. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's, he makes me laugh. He doesn't scare me. So the cat has to be good. And the other thing that's important for this story is the... I'm giving the middle finger. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> the other thing that's important for this story is the performance of the youngest kid, the little, like, little, little, little kid mm -hmm. that we see in like two shots in the movie. Mm -hmm. If he can't pull off the movie, then it's not going to work. Um... So I am excited about it. I think the trailer looks cool, but those things just have me a little bit, little bit hesitant, hoping for the best. Uh, cool. So that's I, 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 I'm. This is one of those horror movies that I'm actually kind of interested in seeing because it, it doesn't feel like the the average like monster rah at you kind of thing. Right. It feels like there's a little more to it. So um, and it's based on a Stephen King story. Yeah, and, and his work is is usually pretty good. You know what I read once. It was that is a Stephen is I think it's the only Stephen King book that I read from beginning to end. It's called The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon or Tom. It's like a baseball player, mm. and it was just the most boring book in the world. <laughs> was no it a horror or was it? <laughs> nothing happened. Like literally, nothing happened. It was the worst. Don't read that book. You, you picked up the wrong. I picked one. up the wrong book. It was literally. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna read a Stephen King book. This one. Nope. Done. <laughs> The uh, title should have given it away. The title's too long. You should just go for it, it, it. or carry or one word titles. Kenny says uh, Stephen King movie should be a great topic for Cinephilia. I agree. It, we should good. we should do that. 
Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, cool. So one of the things we forgot to ask you about, to ask you, tell you about today, is that we have our wheel. We have our wheel. Yes. And, and it's ready to go. I'm so excited so, for um, it. And we're still raising money for our, our TwitchCon trip, which is happening in, oh crap, in a week. Yeah. Nope, two weeks. Bachelor parties next weekend. Oh, right. Two right, weeks. Right. We have two more weeks before TwitchCon. Uh, we so we talked about wanting to like not just asking you to donate. Well, I mean, we're asking you to donate because that's what we do. Uh, but also giving you like a, something fun to do in like exchange for donations. So we're gonna do. We introducing this thing with the wheel. Uh, we're gonna introduce topics that are. Um, it's gonna be like a little um, debates. I I don't have a any SmackDown. Any, a SmackDown or something. Cinematic SmackDown. Cinematic SmackDown. There you go. Thank you. You made a name for it. Um, <laughs> I'm good at that. And so we have a wheel set up. So $10 donations will uh, spin the wheel. And then um, we'll give each person about a minute, minute and a half to uh, just, uh, make their argument. And then you guys are going to vote who wins. We're gonna. I'm going to keep a scoreboard. So over the weeks as we go, we're going to keep a scoreboard of who, keep, who wins these, uh, these arguments to see who's the smartest person. Smartest is not a word. The smartest. Uh, so, if you want to to suggest a, a topic for future episodes, then do it in the Discord. You can leave a, a topic in there that we can come up with, or that you come up with that we can talk about. But for today, there's I guess there were a couple in the Discord, huh? Uh, yeah. So we have was one in the Discord. I think it was Super Saiyan Q, uh, Super Saiyan, who said uh, best food. So that's on there. So that's on there. So we'll the best have, food in the movie. If it comes up, we'll have to talk about best food. Uh, we have the best monster. We're doing like Halloween-y stuff. So best monster. Uh, we have best movie death. Uh, best Halloween movies. And that's not like the Halloween franchise, but just movies based general. around the holiday. The holiday. So not just yeah. horror movies, but Halloween related. Yeah. Uh, best jump scare. Uh, best horror director. Best trick or treater in a movie. Some of these are really hard, and I don't know how I'm going to argue these. <laughs> and best scream queen. I'm so. surprised you don't have something off the top of your head for trick or treater, because there's, I can think of a movie you love that has trick or treating in it. <laughs> oh yeah, got it. Boom, done. Uh, You're so, yeah. welcome. So yeah, so at any point, this is literally at any point during the stream, and this is what the power is: is the fun power to you guys. At any point during the stream, whether it's the beginning, the end, in the middle of a discussion, you guys donate. We will, we will stop everything. And cut and do our um our debate. I'm excited. I think that'll be fun. Yeah, I can't wait for. So cool. If you guys want to check uh, on the link below where it says donate, or you guys can go to uh, streamlabs.com forward slash perception studio, and they will um. Yeah, there it is. It's in the it's in the chat. Nightbot, thank you, Nightbot. And your move your your donation goes to a good cause because it helps them get to TwitchCon. Yeah, and so. and it also goes back to the channel so we can keep buying equipment to do stuff. Uh oh, it happened. <gasps> Spin that wheel. Already? Yep, okay. already. Here we go. Thank you, Winston. It is Thank time. you so much. Here we go. Spin the wheel. The wheel just got huge for the some reason. The wheel is huge. Best movie death. Boom. Okay. Sorry. Best movie death. Okay, of, hold on. Of any movie ever. Any movie ever. Huh. So I'll give you like, let's give ourselves a couple seconds to think about that. That should have been a lot smaller and a white exploded into gigantic. Best movie death. Okay. I, I have one. You have one? I have one. Okay. We'll do a minute and a half. I'm going to time you. Well, I figure one out. Okay, here we go. Ready? And tell us about it. Oh, I'm not even sure if I can fill a minute and a half. It's um, in the very first Nightmare on Elm Street movie, uh, the character is Christina, who's this girl that she's just sleeping in, in, in bed. And she's um, she's actually with her boyfriend. Uh, the two of them are in the room. And uh, obviously, Freddy comes around when you're sleeping so she's sleeping and the boyfriend wakes up and discovers that she's like floating around the room and what's actually happening is the, the way that the death is is filmed is that they're in a rotating room and <clears throat> the room is actually the way it's no wait the rotating room is a different death you're making That's this up the, yeah i'm making okay forget the rotating room What's cool about Christina's death is that she's actually floating in the air and she's she's sleep and dying in her sleep, um, getting these cuts and stuff all around her. But the way that she's floating in the air, God, I wish I could show the clip because you have to be able to see it. I don't know if I can describe it the way it's um. How much time do I have left? You still got time. 
You gotta, she's floating seconds. in the air. The, the boyfriend is, is screaming in the corner watching her. And it's just cool the way that she literally looks like she's floating in the air. It's just movie magic. And it's a it's a visual thing. So I'm not sure if I can explain it the way the way that would get me to win this argument. Wow. <laughs> this is how I win, ladies and gentlemen. Our first argument. Um... <laughs> One minute thirty. That was amazing. Uh, <laughs> that was horrible. Round of applause for Will. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a death, but now I don't. I'm gonna do it, and you guys, I'll let you are. Because my net mind is like, wait, I, it's not. I don't know if it's necessarily a Halloween movie. It's just we just it said best. Have to be. Oh, we, we said best said movie death. Best movie death. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start. So this is. I don't know if it's the best movie, but this is my favorite movie with death. Actually, I had thought about the one that Danny just said, Paul Rubens and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I thought about that but too. Thanks. That's so pretty I saw, funny. I saw it in the chat, so now I can't use it. So my favorite movie death that I think I've seen was the the captain is the captain in um in Pan's Labyrinth. Okay. And how at at the very how he is killed at the very end. Um, I think for me, I in my head, right off the top of my head, was my favorite movie death is because it felt like it was like super satisfying. <laughs> to watch this man die yes because he spends the whole movie being a horrible horrible person leading up to that death i love him being cut open that's like that's one of my favorite scenes oh, in that movie it's, it's when, when it, yeah. he gets cut open so you're like oh this guy's gonna suffer it was like a little hint of suffering but watching him like he's holding the baby and and he walks sorry i'm gonna spoil it for you uh he walks towards the end of the movie and he literally he knows it's gonna happen and he hands the baby back and the guy just puts his gun up and just shoots him right in the head and for me, that was, like, super satisfying. Because, like, in a weird way, you want it to happen. And as soon as, like, as just about a minute before it's going to happen, you know exactly what's going to happen. And and um, and um because he you know when he knows. Because he realizes that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And it was, like, really one of those... I don't think I've ever had a super satisfying death where I was like, fuck yeah, that guy, that guy had it coming. And I'm, like, it was, like, <laughs> like calming. Like, yep, fuck that guy. He's dead. And I appreciate that he's dead. And I'm glad that he went out. All horribly and sad. Minute 27. So. That was pretty good. Yeah, thank you. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to. I'm gonna, I've never done this before. Oh, I didn't open the window. So th- that was our argument. Thank you so much for the. Oh, the, the Skywalker. Nah, his death was okay. <laughs> it's funny because. I had two deaths in mind. And I should have gone with the other one. Because it would have been a better competition for that death. Because it's more about what builds up to that death. But I'll save that for another time. Yeah. Okay, so give me one second, you guys. I didn't do the thing that I... With the scoreboard? I was going to do a poll. Oh, I've never done a, a poll. poll. So he's he's setting a poll up to so that you guys can figure out who won that debate. Was there any other news that I should go over while you do that? Or should I start talking about Universal Monsters? We can start talking about Universal Monsters. So while he's doing that, we're going to start talking about Universal Monsters, as you just heard us agree on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, Robo- Rusty Roboticon. Thank you. Nightmare on Elm Street has the best deaths. I agree. Um, Hans dies at the end of, of Die Hard. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty good one, too. So, oh, it, something just came up in the, the chat. Yeah, that was me. That was me. That but was, it's wrong? I did it wrong. Okay, let's talk about Universal Monsters. This is what's playing in the background is Bride of Frankenstein, and we're going to go through the history. There's so many different monster movies and horror movies that came out of the Universal Studios productions that... I don't think we can cover all of them in the time frame. It would take a couple episodes. But I thought we could hit on a couple of the bigger ones and, and more well-known ones um, that kind of make up the franchise. So these but are... But before that... Sorry. <laughs> I finished it. Uh, He's ready. I typed it wrong. Uh, so now if you guys go to that uh, that link below and vote, and in like a minute or so, we'll give it about a minute, I will check to see and we'll see who won this art and I'll, we'll keep track and we'll keep doing this and we'll get better at this, I promise. Because if you're going to donate money, I'm going to need Will to step it up a little bit. Um. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be good. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Winston, for uh, allowing us to start off our, our, our... And then, so, yeah. So, from now on, go to the Discord. Drop a bunch of those things in the Simf Affiliate thing. I'll grab them, and I'll start rotating them through. Um, 
so we can keep keep figuring out maybe maybe i'll make it a little longer we'll see we'll see what how much time works better and we'll keep fizz, um, fidgeting with it fuzzing with it and see what happens so let's go um Get on back to Universal, Universal movies. movies. Um, Universal monster movies are, are primarily like the horror movies that <clears throat> Universal put out starting in the 20s and it kind of goes up to the 50s. They still put out horror movies, but these specific movies usually go from like the 20s to the 50s. Um, the first one that they did was a silent film. A lot of people think that the Universal horror movies started with uh, Dracula. But before that, they actually did put out a few silent horror movies, um, such as The Night, The Night, The Hunchback of Notre Dame uh, in 1923, which starred Lon Chaney. You just got a subscription. Yeah, this was, uh, Thanks. Thanks, Metal God. So uh, Lon Chaney is uh, the guy who, did, who starred in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It was directed by Wallace Worsley. Um, and it was a silent film, so you know that means that everything kind of has to be pantomime. There was no dialogue. There was some text, maybe, but there was no dialogue to actually uh, get things across. Um, and it ended up being a huge success. I mean, horror movies weren't. There were definitely scary things, but horror movies weren't like a major, major thing yeah. during the silent era. Um, there were lots of of silent films that had like tricks of the camera and stuff to like to get the audience reactions um and horror probably delved from that because they were doing lots of things mm-hmm. that were just like how can we creep out the audience or surprise the audience or scare the audience um but this actually had a story it wasn't just like a trick um you know the story of hunchback notre dame is about quasimodo living in the bell tower and stuff like that so this movie kind of started to set the horror standards um because it was so so successful that other companies and even universal started to do more movies that were like this um hunchback notre dame is actually in the public domain because the copyrights weren't renewed in the 50s when it should have been the movie yes the movie okay Yes. I say the the book, which the book is was long, is, oh, long. So that's why it was easy to just do it, right? Because it, it was like in the eighteen something, something. Um, eighteen sixty five. So the next, I believe, the very next horror movie that Universal did was The Phantom of the Opera in nineteen twenty five. Um, I don't think there were any between that. We're going to skip over some because, like I said, there's too many to talk about. But I believe that this was the direct next horror movie. Um which also starred Lon Chaney as the Phantom, and he became, like, a superstar within these, yeah, he was, these horror movies. Because he also, he also did his own makeup, right? Right. So yeah, he, was he like, did his own makeup as Quasimodo in, um, in Hunchback, which included false teeth that he had his own dentist create. He had contacts that he wore that actually fucked up his eyesight after the movie. Oh, like, they? yeah. And he also wore these... Um, these restrictions on his legs so that he had a funny walk um to move around and that hurt him for the rest of his life too oh, so that, like this is what it's happened like being a puppeteer this is what happens uh, pre-cg yeah. i mean like all of this stuff actually had to happen in real life in order for it to exist in the movie unless it was some sort of camera trick but that stuff couldn't have been camera tricks um but yeah he did his own makeup for phantom too and in that he kind of had like these dark eyes to make him look like a um skeleton like mm-hmm. a skull and then he figured out some way to pin the tip of his nose yeah, back I think so he, he had, looked like i think he had like two wires and then he had hit under his makeup that pulled up his nose yeah that made him look weird so like to me it's one of the creepiest looking faces yeah that i mean even to this day it's to look at that old silent movie and he'd like, did this so where he'd, like look up a little bit so you'd like look right up, up his nose and it was just creepy. And he had to, like, yeah, the, uh, the eye thing we were talking about, the eyes. So I found out, I did not realize until I was researching for this episode that um, there's a reason why he was so amazing at pantomiming and why he was so good in silent films. Both of his parents were deaf. Oh, okay. So he literally grew well, up pantomime. expressing himself like with his body and his hands and not having to talk, um, which is kind of amazing. He's, mm-hmm. I mean, that explains why he was so good in the silent film era um and it's so cool that he was a pioneer not only of the silent movie horror stuff but he was also a makeup pioneer like like 
Yeah. Like, because that's a big deal in yeah. in the horror genre, and it's kind of kind of teaches you like it's good. F- I mean, any art kind of artwork, any kind of art, it's always good to like know more than you think you'll know. Because mm-hmm. at some point in your life, somebody's gonna say, "We need the guy like him." It's like you're a good actor, and you can do your makeup. Yep, you're in, and it makes life. Easy. And that's definitely like um, when. Universal was deciding to make these movies. They would go, if this is going to be a horror movie, we need Lon Chaney. He's the one who can pull this <laughs> yeah. off for us. So you're, yeah, exactly. It was um, actually re-released in the 30s with sound. Oh, I've, I've never seen. Did the they re-record of sound. sound, or did they just did they record sound originally? I think they recorded sound originally. Um, actually, no, I'm not sure. No, because that would have been the whole point. That if you can record sound, you can play back sound. But maybe they were having, like, even if they recorded it, maybe they couldn't figure out how to synchronize it. Oh, maybe. Um, I don't know how that works. So, yeah, I'm not be. I'm not sure which is true, whether they, whether it was recorded or if they created new sound for it. Um, I will have to look that up or find out. Uh, so, it turns out mm-hmm. that I won. Four votes to one. I figured that. Yeah. So, I figured that uh, was going to happen. And, and then uh, people are suggesting that we have we, we have um, punishments for the loser. So we'll figure out that out. So I'm saying, because on, on quarter one, they like, they chew peppers or, or drink something oh, stupid. Oh, God. I'm, I would be up for that. Because that would make it, that would be a more incentive yes. for like to win. <laughs> so I, I will look into punishments for the loser. That'd be kind of fun. Man, now I really wish I had said my, should I tell you what my other yeah, what was idea that? was? I was going to say drag me to hell. Because oh, yeah. the, the entire movie, and it's it, this is on the top of my head because I was just talking to a friend online about it. Um, the entire movie spends, the, the end of the movie is literally the title of the movie. Yeah. And yet you spend the entire movie thinking that somehow she's going to be able to save herself from this curse. And then at the end, she can't. Like, no matter what had happened in that movie, she was going to get dragged to hell. Yeah. Um, and so, that, yeah, I think that would have been a better <laughs> one for the argument. Uh, some key says they could record sound but not listen to it. I guess I'm, that's probably why they were able to release. Right. The that's sound that's what I was thinking is that maybe there was just a problem with synchronizing it and oh yeah because we didn't ever record sound way prior to that. Duh. Yeah. So it was just about it was the synchronizing and playing it back together. That was the big thing. It's not like they they realized how to record sound. They've been doing it forever. <laughs> sound came before film. Yeah. yeah. Duh. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Chad. Thank you, Sam Kree, for being smarter than us. <laughs> so, um, one little bit of trivia that I found that I didn't realize is that part of the opera house from Phantom of, Phantom of the Opera still exists. What? Did I, you know, know I, I have stuff to tell you about that. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Ahead. It still exists. It's um, on Universal Studios soundstage. Um, and apparently every time that they try to remove it, Something weird happens and people think it's the ghost of Lon Chaney. So it just never gets taken down now. And it's now uh, listed, I guess, as the oldest interior film set in the world. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Update on that information. Did they did they get rid of it? It is no longer there. Okay. They tore it down to build Harry Potter land. Is that where it was? It was right there. It was where it was. So trivia number one. That's cool. Trivia number two. I actually got to perform on that set. How? I, I've been inside what? the set and performed inside the set. It was the coolest thing in the world because it's it's inside. It was inside the soundstage, and so basically it was a giant box inside the soundstage. So we, I sat outside waiting for it to get called, and then finally went inside, and it was just the it's just theater set. I it, it's actually the the set that they used on the Muppets, the first movie at where they do the whole um, Rainbow Connection. And, okay. And they Kermit and, and Piggy come out. And the whole group of people, group puppets come out. That that set is the is the Phantom of the Opera oh, cool. set. So they shot the the Muppet um that Muppet movie there, and um, I was one of the Muppets on the we're singing on stage. So I got to perform on the Phantom set. I just realized that when you said that, yeah. But it's, so that was one of the right after that is when they started tearing. They uh, tore down a bunch of sound stages and literally just built new ones over here. They just needed that space to build. Yeah. Uh, Do you know where exactly in Harry Potter land that would have been? Like, if you were to go down, could you place where it was? I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Could you have to oh, they, think oh, about they the logistics? Tore down of... for something else. <clears throat> if it's not Harry Potter Land, they tore for something else. 
But just the fact that it's not there anymore is interesting. Yeah, because it was a big deal. It was supposed to be like this big haunted thing, which I don't know what, when people say the ghost of Lon Chaney would show up whenever they try to tear it down. I don't know what exactly that means. That means yeah. I don't, I haven't heard any specific stories about things that happened, but. Yeah, so, and, and I know there was a big uproar when they knew that that Universal was going to like tear down. Because I think from what I gathered, if I remember this correctly, they really didn't have any intention to like do anything with this set. They were just going to tear it out. But because it's old and it's been there, and yeah, and it, and it makes sense, it'd been there forever. They needed to use their sound stage, yeah. And it's, I'm sure by the time it was torn down, it was like completely dilapidated. It as was well. pretty, yeah, like, it looked pretty old. But I think what happened is that, um, they actually somebody actually they took it, they actually it's preserved somewhere. They were they they disassembled it and took it, and it's either re- been rebuilt somewhere else or it's been kept. So it was saved. So it wasn't completely destroyed. Hmm. Somebody, they, somebody, like some, somebody. I'll get information on this because I remember exactly what it was. But yeah, they did come. It was preserved. It was taken out of there, and then they turned down the center stage. Oh, that's uh, cool. But yeah, it was preserved. But it was really cool. Yeah, I was. Um, I didn't realize it till after I was working. Like I was work- I think the day of that is when I went. Oh, this is a cool set. And somebody said, "This is the old Phantom set." <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa!" Had you seen the movie by that point? Yeah, I've seen the movie. Okay. Yeah, because that movie's awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. Oh, there it goes. Preserved silent film sets. So, thank you, Hardliner, for finding that for us. Um, so, it was kind of cool that I got to be there. Where was it preserved? Oh, it's going to make me. No, I don't want to <laughs> click on the ad. Yeah, see? That's what I was in. Uh, That's cool. We can see it. They can't. Oh, I guess they can all click the link. Click the, the link, link in, in the, the chat. This it's kind of cool. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> you know what? I don't know what they tore down, but I remember walking out of the soundstage and seeing the the transformers ride nearby okay so somewhere down there yeah so i don't know if it so was it's ho- not maybe it's not, not harry, harry, per- harry potter land harry but Perger. somewhere over there somewhere over there yeah another yeah, there's lots of other stuff there cool so we'll check this out um but yeah so they got sa- it saved it um sorry that's okay. awesome yeah that was a cool bit. cool story tidbit about my life um there, okay, so there's some other movies that we're going to skip, but one that I have to like just point out one little piece of trivia for is The Man Who Laughs that came out in 1928. Um, also a silent film, not as popular as, as some of the other Universal monsters, but I'm sure Danny, if you're watching, uh, would appreciate me mentioning it because The Man Who Laughs is actually the character who inspired the design of the Joker in the Batman Ooh. series. So... Yeah, if it's a very creepy uh, movie because he's just got this huge smile on his face, and that's where the Joker gets his smile from. Um, so if you have not seen the man, the man who laughs, definitely check it out because it's worth a watch. Um, and now we get to the big one, the one that most people think that the Universal movie start with started with is Dracula in 1931. Yeah. Um, have, have you seen both versions of the 1931 Dracula? No. Did, did you not know there were two versions? I, maybe I didn't. I didn't know there were two versions. So, they were, the Universal had been so successful with horror movies, um, but they also were trying to like keep a good budget or whatever yeah, yeah. when they make these things because horror is always a risky thing, especially back then. Like, um, it hadn't really, really picked up yet and become a huge genre. Mm-hmm. So, they were still being conservative with it. So when they decided to make Dracula, they actually um, originally wanted to make the movie based off of Bram Stoker's novel Mm -hmm. and make it this big sweeping epic. Um, And then the depression kind of hit and they decided instead to make it based on this play that had just (laughs) happened. There was like a local play that had happened. Um, So Bela Lugosi, who we all know as being the iconic Dracula, was actually Dracula in his play. And they oh. they got him from this play, and they got two other actors. I'm, I can't remember which ones, but a couple of the actors from the play mm-hmm. came into the movie. Um, and Bella Lugosi was actually the go between between Universal and Stoker's wife, who was um, his widow, who was in control of the estate, mm-hmm. um, to make sure that it all happened. And mm-hmm. because this isn't the first Dracula movie, um, technically Nosferatu is based on Dracula, mm-hmm. but it has no mention of Dracula because it was done illegally. They didn't get the rights to actually use Dracula. Um, but this one, Dracula, Universal's Dracula, actually got the rights to it. So 
in order to to save money because they were trying to make it a smaller production than they originally wanted. Um, but they still wanted to make their profits back. They actually shot two Dracula movies at the same time. One the during same actors and everything. Nope. Oh no! Hope. They used the same sets mm-hmm. during a day. It was um, Todd Browning, who's the director of Dracula. He's a great director. He also directed a movie called Freaks, which is really mm-hmm. creepy. Um, but he during the day they filmed his version of the movie, which starred Bella Lugosi. Mm-hmm. Um, at night, while that cast and crew were gone, they used the sets to direct um, a Spanish language version of Dracula. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. For... So, and it's it's literally the exact same movie, just in Spanish. And they it was a Spanish cast. Uh, the director for that one was, um, I have it right here. Directed by George Milford. Milford, yeah. And starring Carlos Villarios. And Lupita Tobar. Um, yeah. And it's actually, if you... Usually, if you get, like, Dracula on Blu-ray, the Spanish language one is, like, an extra on it, so you can mm-hmm. watch both. Um, I've, I've seen both, and they're actually... It's it's the same movie, like, literally same exact shots, shot for shots, mm-hmm. but um, the Dracula is a very different... Because, you know, they're two different actors playing it, so Bela Lugosi is kind of like this... Um, he's got that glare, like... In Bela Lugosi's Dracula, he never blinks. Like he stares, you actually never see him blink in the entire <laughs> movie, um, and that became like an iconic thing for Lugosi is that he had this stare. Um, but the the Spanish Dracula was a little more campy, like he smiled a lot, <laughs> um, or it wasn't it wasn't even like an intentional smile, but it was you know just the face that he gave was kind of um, not quite as intimidating. <laughs> but the Spanish language movie is still pretty good like i suggest watching it um i still enjoy it i think this is both of them right here yes that's both of them that's a crop of of them doing the same thing in the same room (laughs) just one did it at in the in the daytime and one did it at night trying to open the image he's he's gonna show you guys in a second but yeah i love that they i think that's such a brilliant way to yeah that's great get two movies for the price of one basically i mean you're still paying for Two yeah, sets of crew and cast, but using those big sets, like finding a way to to incorporate them when you're not working on them, is is pretty good. So here is the image. This is both of them. And you can see the difference. Like they, they're both still cool Draculas, but one is just a little more intense than the other. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, what's funny is that also we were talking about Lon Chaney being the horror guy. If they did a horror movie, they wanted Lon Chaney. They initially wanted Lon Chaney to to play Dracula, Mm -hmm. but he died right before production. Oh, so he could have been almost. He could have been. Also Dracula. He could have almost been also Dracula. Um, so they went with Lugosi since they were doing the, uh, play version that Lugosi was familiar Mm -hmm. with anyway. Is that how Lugosi got his, like, doing stuff into film, or...? Yes. Okay. Yep. I believe that this was his first film. Um, And he really, like, a lot of things that he's known for, people would attribute to Dracula, even though other things um, happened in other movies that he was in. Because he played... He never really broke out of that that kind of role. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of his subsequent movies were also, like, vampires or, or eerie kind of characters yeah um something else that's interesting about dracula is or lugosi's dracula at least is that you never see him with fangs he doesn't have fangs in that movie that's right he doesn't <laughs> and that's like even though he's like the iconic version of a vampire that everyone thinks of he doesn't have nah, fangs, fangs. <laughs> didn't need that him. didn't come till later did we just get something? I thought I heard something. No, I was just hitting my mic. Oh, okay. Um, so, Dracula did very well. Um, Dracula came out in 1931, and it did so well that Universal wanted to do another horror movie immediately, which they did, because Frankenstein also came out in 1931. Oh, yeah. Like, they did it really quick. Um, 
which you would never tell because you would never be able to tell because it's such a well-made movie. It doesn't look like it was a rush job, but they were trying to to cash in on the success of of Jocula. Um, and it kind of became a domino effect because as each movie did well, they put the money towards the next horror movie, and that's how the Universal Monster franchise started. What's this year pulling up? Uh, I just saw some video of Frankenstein. Yeah, some color sixteen millimeter video uh, film of of um, Frankenstein. That was I don't know if it was just released or I just read a talk about it. Hmm. Uh, I hadn't seen that. Definitely tell me more about it if you can figure. Yeah, it out. I'll find it so I can show you guys. Um. So Frankenstein was also based on a play that was based on the original Mary Shelley novel. I guess they just figured that it worked, so they kept going with it. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can actually see. I was going to talk about his makeup. Um, that's really cool to see. Yeah, this is taken by his <clears throat> wife, I think. This is in not the first Frankenstein, but uh, Son of Frankenstein. Okay. This Boros Koloff in the costume. In the makeup. So one of the things that I was going to mention is the fact that he, Frankenstein is green. Um, he was, in the original, he was painted as green even though the movie is black and white because that color shows up differently in black and white mm -hmm. so that he still stood out. And then all the promotional material for it obviously had him green. So green became the color for Frankenstein even though that's not the color he was in the original novels. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of, this movie kind of set the precedent for it. For him being a green character, Danny wants to know if that's still Pierce's makeup in this in 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 this Son of Frankenstein movie. In Son of Frankenstein, I'm not sure. I do know that in um, the original Frankenstein movie, uh, Boris Karloff's uh, cheeks look uh, looked a little sunken in mm -hmm. more because he actually took his um, bridges out in his teeth so that oh, so it's sun so oh. it sunk in. And in Bride of Frankenstein, when they were when he was returning to the character, oh yeah, he says, oh yep, there he is. I guess that was that guy. Oh yeah, that was yeah. Pierce. Okay, cool. I didn't know what Pierce looked like. Um, in in Bride of Frankenstein, he had to put his bridges back in because they wanted him to finally talk. Oh, so he needed them. Yeah, and he was completely Boris Koloff was completely against talking. He didn't think the monster should talk Pierce at all. No. But they wanted it so so his face looks fuller in all the subsequent movies because he's got his bridges back in he's got to talk um yeah back then the amount of makeup that he had to wear for that movie was ridiculous because they had to they did the cotton thing yeah they just sort of they, they take cotton they put um the stuff on it, and they just basically build up cotton to get the shape and he ended up he would have to sleep in the makeup so rather than have to like having to go home put the makeup on take it off and then go home and do it again the next morning yeah he went home with the makeup and then it was easier for them to just fix it in the morning yeah. than it was to start completely over. And it, it, was, was, it was even worse on The Mummy. <laughs> yeah. So think of like something uncomfortable, like like little kid Halloween makeup they put on you, you know, that's always all sticky and gross and it feels awful. Like that, like 10 times is worse. And then having to sleep and do it in it. Yeah. It was these, not comfortable. Because it would take hours to put that kind yeah. of thing on and then more hours to, to take it off. So it's, yeah, it's easier to just go home with it. Poor monster. Yep. Yep. Um. Yes, good point is that in the original Frankenstein, um, Frankenstein is actually the name of the doctor and not the monster, which a lot of people mix up. But in Bride of Frankenstein, they actually do call it the monster Frankenstein. So. so if you're referring to him these days, then it could go either way. But if you're referring to him as far as the very first movie, then yeah, it has to be that he's the monster. Um, and Boris Karloff, who was an unknown at that point, wasn't even credited in the credits. It just said the monster dot 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 mm -hmm. question mark. Um, and that was how he got credited. But <laughs> but Boris, <laughs> but he became famous from this movie because he became like the next Lon Chaney between Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi. They just kept bringing him back for for horror movies. They were the horror guys. Um Another thing about this movie is that it was uh, pre-code, pre them having the whole like movie code because of censorship. What do you mean? <laughs> That's what it. 
pre-code movies are, are movies that take place before 1934 because in 1934 there was um, a, a censor code that came out that movies had to go by oh, so they okay. couldn't yeah, show yeah, 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 yeah. they couldn't show certain things anymore yeah, yeah. but this was pre-code so they actually um, got away with a few things there was one thing that did have to be edited out um, that was later returned to the movie in the 80s when they when someone found the footage and they re-edited it back in but the scene with the little girl at the lake mm-hmm. um, originally what what we know today is that you know there's the whole scene with Frankenstein where um, they have a cute little moment and then he throws her in the water mm-hmm. and sh- she has like a drowning scene um, only half of that could be shown mm-hmm. to begin with so that scene as we know it now is just from the 80s mm-hmm. when they re-edited it back they couldn't show the girl drowning oh um, uh, yeah so they just yeah. kind of we just yeah. assume that she drowned yeah we assume, assume but they yeah we, but now we can actually see it mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah the uh, the I think this movie, along with a bunch of other movies, were what led to the creation of the code mm-hmm. because um, it was just like the the idea of decency, with that yeah. whatever that is. Um, another thing that was really adamantly that audiences were adamantly upset about in Frankenstein is the fact that Doctor Frankenstein calls himself or refers to himself as God. Mm-hmm. and so people were just like pissed at that because that was blasphemous mm-hmm. um so stuff like that couldn't happen after the code yeah. like they they began to shut down on all of those kind of things but even still even with um those kind of things like be- people being upset at those kind of things frankenstein was highly successful successful enough that it's probably arguably i i would argue that it is the probably the most iconic horror movie ever made like if you think of horror frankenstein is going to be boris karloff as frankenstein is one of the first images that comes to mind um so that was and winston wants to know typically how long were these movies these older horror movies they usually range from like usually about an hour and a half like it's like typical average yeah um, some were a little longer, some were a little shorter. It depended on the story, but yeah, they're, it was pretty typical. Um, it's interesting that I'll, I'll just skip ahead because that actually goes straight into uh, Bride of Frankenstein. There are a couple of movies that happened between Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. But when Bride of Frankenstein was um, being promoted, it was being promoted as like this is going to be the scariest two hours of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, but Bride of Frankenstein came out in. 1935 which is right after the code Mm. so between the time that they were making the movie that they were planning to be two hours they wanted it to be a two hour movie um, they had to go through the code and when the movie came out it was 75 minutes oh dang so they had to cut a lot of stuff Um, almost half the movie yeah and it's interesting also that um, Bride of Frankenstein is pretty iconic as well as a character mm-hmm. um she's only in the movie for a total of three minutes she's the, yeah the whole the movie is basically about her creation like what leads to her creation yeah. and all of that and she's only in it for like a little bit at the end um but the the actress who plays her elsa lancaster is actually also in it at the very beginning as mary shelley the author um mm. it's the same actress doing mm-hmm. both roles and Another bit of trivia about her is that she's also in Mary Poppins. Did you know that? Is she? Yeah. She's Katie Nana that leaves at the oh, very beginning yeah. of Mary Poppins. It's the same, cool. same actress. Um, is, is there a version of the movie as in, in its whole, the whole two-hour thing somewhere? I don't think so because like, that footage is probably lost by now. They just, so it wasn't like they had a full movie and then they had to cut it down. They basically, when they were editing, they, they ended up cutting it down. Yeah. They cut it down So they never had was, a full... They never probably never had a full... Well, cut. they might have had a, a full cut, but... I mean, back then that stuff just got destroyed, destroyed all the time. Way, yeah. So uh, that's why so many movies are are missing parts or or lost today. Because especially for a studio that's trying to be as economic as possible about their financial spending, they would just reuse stuff just, or yeah. throw it away. And yeah, um, before Bride of Frankenstein came The Mummy, which was. You know, Boris Karloff had had so much success as Frankenstein, mm-hmm. even though he wasn't credited. And they were like, let's make 
him the mummy too yeah. like um but people knew who he, that it was him right there wasn't like or was it was a back he then, was a, he was known. he was so not known that he was actually not invited to the premiere of frankenstein Oh, that sucks. <laughs> but I think after the movie had been out, then people started to figure out who he was and mm-hmm. know who he was. That he you know, Universal, gained. yeah, he gained notoriety, and Universal wanted to bring him back um, in subsequent movies. But they were they're putting these movies out like back to back. Like I said, Dracula was 1931, Frankenstein was also 1931, and The Mummy is 1932. So they're like Universal is not wasting any time creating this. Yeah this series of movies not Siri (laughs) series Um, the director of The Mummy was Carl Freund Freund I'm not sure how it's pronounced Um, he was actually the cinematographer of Dracula okay but this was I believe the first movie that he actually directed um, he was also the cinematographer for Metropolis. He mm. was from Germany. Um, and he was also the cinematographer for Surprise, I Love Lucy. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> so all these people were like, know each other. And they're just, you know, like like the puppet world is small. Back yeah, then, small. the movie world, the, the Hollywood movie world was pretty small too. Especially well, within a studio because the studio kept using the same people all, over and over because they were so mm-hmm. um, under contract. So, yeah, it was a small world. Everyone yeah. knew each other. Um, and I, I was, I'm sure it was an easy job of just turn on the lights because everything was just <laughs> evenly lit. Um, uh, Winston says, uh, the whole film destruction thing is a real pain when trying to watch classic Doctor Who. Yeah, so that's, I was going to mention that earlier, that, that Doctor Who's that 50 years worth of, of episodes, but like a, a lot of early episodes are just gone. Yeah. They, just, they were shot on TV and then were tossed around somewhere and they're never seen again. Uh, they actually... Was it a couple of years ago? They actually found a few episodes in like Germany. Somebody like had them. So That's what's cool is that them. like, and it's it's funny how far away these things are usually found mm-hmm. because people collect these things. Mm-hmm. Like p- crazy people like me would cr- collect these things, um, and you never know that it's going to be like so useful mm-hmm. or so valuable in the future. But yeah, it's it's you have to be thankful that someone was thinking that this stuff should be saved. Yeah. Uh, the Russell Robot Robotic Kenny, I can't say Russell Robotic. <laughs> was reminding everybody about our, our ten dollars donation for the Wheel of Debate. What did you call it? The Wheel of? I called it Cinematic Smackdown. Cinematic Smackdown. So basically, we have uh, a few topics in our wheel, and if you donate ten dollars, we will do about a one minute and a half argument, and then you guys get to vote who wins on that topic. And uh, yep, yeah, all the proceeds go towards our TwitchCon uh, trip in two weeks. That we're gonna go promote the channel. We're not doing it for fun. We're doing it for promoting the channel and networking and all that stuff. But um, but yeah, if you guys want to donate 10 bucks, that link right there, streamlabs.com forward slash presenter studio. Um, you can do that and then we'll drop everything and do it. If we'll not, do it's on okay. the spot. Yeah, we'll um, just keep talking. And they're they're fun to do. They're fun did to you, do. Did you remove the other topic? I didn't. If, if we go, then I'll remove it. I'll okay. remove it now. Um, so, yeah, we were talking about makeup before. Mm-hmm. The mummy, like, that's some of the most beautiful makeup I've ever seen in a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and it took, I guess it took eight hours for it to be put on, eight which hours? is, yeah, eight hours is long today, but imagine eight it's hours the, back then. Because they would build onto it. it it's yeah. like they had appliances and they just go, here's all your latex masks. No, it's like. No, they would actually just like do sculpt. it there. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And I, and I guess like there's a um, a famous quote that Boris Karloff said to the makeup artist is that the makeup is amazing, but you forgot to fly. That's like what he said to the artist. That's the quote. Um, and what he meant was he literally couldn't open his mouth to like have tea or anything. Mm-hmm. It was just like the minimal amount. Woo, a new yeah, subscription. Yeah, uh, J <clears throat> J K K G. J. J. Koji. J. J. Koji. Koji. Hey, thank you so much for the sub. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like, how do you expect the actor to get through the day if they can't even he eat can't drink. or drink or, um, and if if he had to sleep in that makeup, that was even worse. I I'm gonna guess he probably did. That's something I didn't I hadn't heard of, and that's horrible. Yeah, because I know <laughs> I know uh, Frankenstein did. Frankenstein did. Um, the mummy had lots of of 
Well, all these movies had lots of sequels. They were building franchises. They didn't know at the time when they were making these first ones that it was going to be a franchise, but they just kept putting out all these Monsters, movies. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, and, for, and, and I mean, they were good because we still talk about them now. Yeah. They remain. They're amazing. They're, they're, all they, of the, every movie that we've mentioned so far is amazing. And I highly recommend that's, um, that's it. Even though I didn't even know the whole thing was like, they just put them out to make more money. Let's just keep doing it. Like they, they, they did a good job at it. They were, and so that's why they're still so memorable and they, we still remember them. And they, and the of course, like they, they might have been working fast on them, but back then, everyone who was pretty much in the industry were like, a, as far as being on that level or like being at the top of Universal mm-hmm. or a studio like that, they were like master craftsmen. It wasn't just like, you know, let's get Zach Efron to come play this yeah. werewolf boy. Um, these were like, the top actors, as far as 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 horror is concerned, um, a lot of stuff outside of horror, like a lot of these actors, like Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff, had problem tr- find, finding work later in life mm-hmm. because they were so known with horror that people didn't think that they could do mm-hmm. other stuff, which is unfortunate. But as far as the horror genre, like these were the top people. You could not find anyone bigger than these people, and and, and makeup as well, and directors as well. Um, these are all amazing artists with their craft Mm -hmm. so even if if they were pushing out fast they were still doing fucking good work um but the next movie before the next big movie before bride of frankenstein um actually takes a little change from what we've been talking about because we've been talking about how important the makeup has been um the next big movie that came out in 1933 was The Invisible Man. <laughs> and then, yeah. So there's like no need for makeup in that. Um, but the special effects got to be pushed uh, in their limits because they had to figure out how to make this guy invisible. Mm-hmm. So there was like lots of wire work, lots of like puppeteering inanimate things. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a trick. This is an early trick back then was that they had actually the... Claude Rains was the guy who played, um, the actor who played the Invisible Man. They actually had um, Claude Rains wear a black velvet suit underneath of whatever clothing he was wearing mm-hmm. or um, whatever he was working with. And then they shot him in front of a black velvet backdrop. Mm-hmm. And then they took him out of the, took all the black velvet out and left whatever he was animating or whatever he was wearing. So it was basically early green screen it's good yeah and that that te- that technique was used all the way through the 80s yeah uh into the 80s uh and, 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 and in the 70s and 80s the blue screen started to come on but like the black screen was used uh for a long time you can still see it in movies yeah all the way through the 80s i'm not but, certain whether this is the very first movie to do it but it but it's was definitely early, early. early on yeah yeah uh it's yeah it's something called i think it's luma keying uh, i know that's what I, we call it now is is taking out luma because lum, lum, luminosity that right. you, you take either brights or the darks out and, and for some instances you still use it now I, I used it i've used it a couple of times on things where like i didn't i didn't i just needed to take the darks out and you can just take that out easily and it's it's great um the invisible man i should have mentioned did i mention that um frankenstein was directed by james whale nope so frankenstein was directed by james whale uh, Invisible Man was also directed by James Well, and Bride of Frankenstein was directed by James Well. He was an amazing director, um, and he was. Did he do anything poorly, or was it everything he did well? Everything I've ever seen of him was well, well done. Okay. I got the joke. <laughs> <laughs> he was, was he was um, a queer director way back oh, when, when. Way back when, when did queer directors. Know? I'm not sure if he was completely out or not but everyone knows now um i have a feeling that maybe he maybe i don't know if it was because of how comf- how uncomfortable he was in the industry or because of some sort of backlash because he was trying to be comfortable in industry industry but he did commit suicide later in life oh, that's um awesome. and i assume that it's part of that i don't know i don't know the details of that but while he was alive he did amazing work um bride of frankenstein is probably considered well 
while the original Frankenstein is probably the most iconic horror movie, mm-hmm. Bride of Frankenstein is by far the best made of the Universal monster movies. And I think a, a big part of that is that James Well did not want to come back for a sequel, and they persuaded him to come back for a sequel by saying you could have complete artistic control. And it's also the first movie that was um, shot entirely on a set. Oh, okay. So they got to create everything that they wanted, like how this movie would feel and, and look everything from the ground up um, and, and control, control everything. Yeah. yeah. So that's what's what was playing on the back Not screen. <laughs> now it's just a menu. But it's, Bride of Frankenstein is my personal favorite, even though I love it. Elsa Lancaster and she's only in it for three mi- minutes. It's still a good movie despite that. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was... Oh, that's still Invisible Man. Sorry, I'm going through my checklist. I have checklists now for all these movies because contrary to popular belief, I cannot retain all of this information in my head. <laughs> I'm not I'm not that good at remembering. Um, we have about eight minutes, six minutes left. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, well, let's wrap up. Let's then. wrap it up there. Okay, well, I want to ask about, um, real quick, about the Universal Horror thing that they were supposed to redo all the movies and rebuild their Universal brand, and that kind of went away, right? They, Yeah, that that went away. I think the last movie they did for that was Tom Cruise's The Mummy. Which is pretty bad. I didn't see it, but I assume it looked pretty bad from the trailers. Um, but that is not happening. I, I think they just figured out that it's not going to work or they um, didn't start it the right way they didn't start like, it the right could, way they could, they could still do it i mean like maybe just let it let it let it let that kind of die down for a couple of years because i think that i think i wouldn't mind seeing that again if they did it well and they went kind of like what marvel did with the bringing up the superheroes and stuff if they did yeah. something interesting that was cool and new well, what i was going to lead to with this but we don't have time maybe we can finish it next week or or sometime uh but that just went out yeah um so the the universal monsters were the first cinematic universe yeah Um, they they, i mean everyone talked about how cool it would be to have them in this universe now but they back then when they were making these movies they crossed over all of these characters were appearing in each other's movies Mm -hmm. they all appeared with abbott and costello in a couple of comedies (laughs) which were actually really good i mean they're they're funny but there's they still have the horror element to it so this this cinematic universe already existed and if universal wanted to do it they could if they did it the right way it's definitely possible uh, yeah um, they, i think at this point they need to ignore the, the mummy and just cut here start clean yes because then because what was the movie that did before that they did something else before that they were like oh we're gonna do our thing and it was there another movie? There was, there was a, they did a Dracula movie that was supposed to be part of this universe. Yeah, so it felt like it was very, like, afterthought. Somebody said, we, they made this movie, we're like, well, let's make the, rather than yeah. going in there knowing what they were going to do and having a plan. And I think, it's I hope, like It's like what DC did. Yeah. People, these companies need to, like, plan it out and make it happen, not just expect, like, if they say that these movies, the, the, these characters are all together, that we're just going to buy it. No, like, they need, like... If they go in there with a plan, they go in there with some cool ideas, I think, good directors, I think it could be something cool. Yeah. They have to introduce the characters separately. Separ- separately, yeah. And then let them join up. Which I would be totally down for. Yeah. I, I would be, be totally cool. down for it, too. I would have been totally down for it when Del Toro was working on it, but we can get into that as well. Um, we're, we're definitely going to talk more about this. Okay. So, cool. So, thank you so much for joining us tonight on Cinephilia. Uh, we're going to expand this whole... What's it called? The wheel? <laughs> cinematic smackdown cinematic, cinematic smackdown <laughs> wheel because uh, we want to play with it I think it's, it's going to be really fun uh, and maybe punishments would be fun it's be Sunday punishment because um, quarter to one is a lot of punishment on the quarter to one. Oh, is it oh okay. it's it's last week well, I was, do that I've, la- I've watched it but last week was I didn't watch it last, last week, week was intense uh, there were like milkshakes made out of like chicken and I don't know about those kind of stuff. punishments <laughs> uh, so it's kind of fun so maybe we won't go that crazy <laughs> But thank you so much for watching. We're going to be back tomorrow morning. Not tomorrow morning. Tomorrow night on Type RPG with our uh, this uh, season finale of or the finale of our four week campaign uh, with Chunk as GM of a Star Trek RPG with <laughs> a special guest Malika. Uh, and then uh, and then we, you know, rotate back up again. Meet, come Definitely come by on Wednesday night for more of our, per, our perception check and was, as we kind of explore more of the D&D world of Arthas. I think I said that right. And see what's going on with that. 
Uh, coming up right now in just a couple of minutes after we go off. As soon as we go off, Danny will push some buttons and fix some things. And uh, quarter one will be up in just a few minutes. Woo! We will see you soon. Uh, this week, <laughs> Danny says this week will be more intense. They're going to be more intense. Than yeah, this I week? guess so. Oh goodness. Uh, so uh, so yeah. So you look. Uh, give us a couple minutes, and then we'll be back up with uh, quarter one. All right. Uh, cinephilia later. Cinephilia later. later. I said it right this time. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>